We're going to start volume two. I'm sorry. We're on page 227, Shulchan Khan. I'm sorry. What page? Page 227, Shulchan Khan. Okay. Right, the definition of a secured courtyard. Um, we're continuing on volume one, page 227. We talked about the myths of Shiluch HaKan, that if you come upon a nest with its mother bird sitting on the chicks, that you have to chase the mother bird away before you take the... We talked last week, is it a mitzvah de Raisa? And uh, when does it apply? Even, so, that, even that a kosher bird, too. Well, we talked about it's going to be a kosher bird. bird. No, but this, so we learned in the Gemara that a, a, a non-kosher bird also should look like that. We're, we're going to see today, that at the end of this, that it really applies to kosher birds with kosher simonim. Yeah. So, therefore, one would not be capable of fulfilling the mitzvah with a nest found in a secured courtyard. If, for example, if it's in your backyard, which is secure, nobody else can come in there. If you come across it, the parameter. What, now, what's the definition of uh, uh, of a secure courtyard? So there is a sefer called Shalech to Shalach, which is a book just on Shiluch Khan, which is Chotzra Mishta What 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 is what is the getter of that? Mikri Kol Shederch Bleyodem Lanech Sham Chafetzayim. If a person will keep his personal belongings there. And they're not going to be stolen. So that's already a gather of a chotzer mishdameris, a watched courtyard. So therefore, if you found a nest there, it would be an exclusion to the mitzvah of Unless um, the mother was not lifted from the exit all, all Remember, we said like last last week as well that if you made a tnai when you acquired the, the the courtyard that you're not going to acquire a nest and its and its and its chicks, then in a you would be even in a chutzur mishdamaris you would be you would be makayim the mitzvah. But I in betshuvas agon Rav Chaim Kanievsky, the getter chutzur mishdamaris ain't a tole b'nei ilas amalkam b'manu. It's not dependent on whether the area is locked with a gate or not. Strangers don't go there. A person might have a certain area, a certain area that's not necessarily locked, but he'll keep his things there without fear of being stolen. And this shalach to shalach, who's obviously contemporary today, asked Rav Chaim Kanievsky, "Ma din kenan in knesses? What if you find a nest in a shul?" Agabe Mizgan, for example, uh, on an air conditioner, of fluorescent gvoim or high fluorescent lights, mod mod, hayim choshev mokam emishtamir. Would that, could you be makayim the mitzvah or not, or would it be considered a, a watched area? The kivan shiminasa legiel neshamayi dey sulam yeh nitfas kaganav. Now, if he climbed up there with a ladder, people would think he's a, he's a thief, so in a sense, maybe there's a chotzer mishtamir as. Ve'eshiv li, the bechozos choshev mokam she'en emishtamir. Rabbi Chaim said, no, it is a place that you could be Makaim the Mitzvah because it's really not watched. Mm-hmm. Even she has Drisus the regular Ragnum B'Makam, it's, it's an unsecured location sure. since the pub, public go there. For sure. Because well, it's question, public. Sure the, question, maybe the bigger question would be is, is, is even in your own backyard, right, it was in, on a light pole, right? It's not a place that's like it's like it's a, it's a You don't put your 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 personal items over there. So that could be the same as he's describing a place that has to, a very high up in the shul would be that's similar to that. That's not clear. Well, here he wants to say that if it's if it's on a high place, you would be makayim the mitzvah. It would not be considered chodesh because the public goes there. In the shul, on your in your backyard. Do you have a log if you don't send it away there? We're going to see that tonight as well. Let's see you have a very tall tree in your own backyard. It's in your, it's in your backyard, but it's a very tall tree. And you're, well, it was 20 feet up in the air. It's a nest. And you want to get that? You want to get it, but it's in your backyard. Right, but... So, so again, the, the, the get there of whether... Here, he, in the shul, since the public is still going there, it would be considered an unsecured location. Here in your backyard, it's still a secure location if it is on a tree. Because nobody's coming in there. The method of sending the mother bird away. We have discussed the reasons for the mitzvah, which 
cases are subject to the mitzvah or not. We will now address the question of the proper method of sending the mother away. The Gemara actually records a dispute about this issue. Rashi cites two explanations of how to understand the dispute. In Chulun it says, How do you send the mother a bird away? Ravuna Amar Baragleha, you hold the mother bird by its feet. Ravuna Amar Baragafe with its wings. Ravuna Amar Baragleha, the Chsiv Mishal Chay Regal Ashor Vachamor. It's a Pasuk in Yeshayahu that uses the language of Shiluach but refers to it to a Regal. So Mishal Chay Regal means if you're going to do a Shalach to Shalach, the aim, you should do it with its foot. But Ravuna Amar Baragafe, the Kanfe Ninu. She moves around, remember, she's going to move around with her wings. So by grabbing her by the wings is the way you're sending her away. Says Rashi, Grab her by the feet and send her away. But the gapa is, And he describes agapea as the wings, that you grasp it by the wings and you send it away. Uh, let me get another chair. There, 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 right behind you. So, So, since the Pesach describes Shiluch with a regal, Kach Shomati, says Rashi. Benira Be'enai, says Rashi, She'en Shiluch Zadom L'Shiluch Regal Ashor. But it's not, for example, when the Pesach talks about regal Ashor, Shuhu Holech Braglai, right? Uh, an ox walks with its feet. Here's Achiza Braglai. Here, you're grabbing it by its feet. So, Rashi gives a different shot. Ravun Omer Beregel, She'en Tolash, Gapa, the Shilcha, that when he says when he grabbed her by her feet, that if you detached her wings and sent her away, he, he, he's, he's potter from Shiloh, since the bird walked two or three steps, and it would then be minute to catch her. While Rav Yehuda, I remember Gapa, it has to be able to fly away on its own. Rashi says he brings proof to himself. There was a case that someone detached wings, sent away, and then he, he got it back again. The Chayv Rabbi Yudah Lushalche. Rabbi Yudah said you have to, because the Gemara describes that case, send it, send it again. Sending it away without it being able to flap its wings and fly away a little bit is not considered Shiloh. So according to Rashi's explanation, Rav Huna Rav Yudah disagree as whether one must send the mother away by first holding her wings in order to cause her to leave or by first holding her legs. According to the second opinion, they disagree as to whether one may cut off her wings and force her to leave by foot. Rav Huda says one may cut off her wings and, and shiluach is considered shiluach even though she's going away with her legs. Rav Yudah says one may not. She's got to fly away with her wings. Now the Rambam, when he, when he brings out the Psak, he understands only the first explanation of Rashi and rules in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. He says, when the Rambam in Hilchas Shechita where the halachas of Shiloh Ken are brought, how do you send away the mother bird? You grab her by its wings and chase her away. He keeps on doing it. She keeps on coming back. You have to keep on doing it. Why does one detach a bird's wings? Clip them. Clip their wings? Yeah. They can't fly. They can't fly. So, they can't fly. No, you have to do it in a way that's not Sarbal Echaim, if, if that's possible. But obviously, Ravuna says the way to do it is by clipping their wings. So, so no, no, Ravuna said to do it, so Lahura, he must have done it in a way that's yeah. not Sarbal Echaim. Other we showing him interpret the Gemara, not the Rambam. Using Rashi's second explanation, a rule according to Rav Yehuda that one may not cut off her wings. According to that interpretation, it does not matter whether one holds the mother by her wings or legs when sending away. One simply must ensure that she is capable of flying away using her wings. And that's what the shulchan, you have well, to sort of... Words, so why are we clipping her wings again? What's no, the problem? Right now, no. There's a machlokas in the Gemara. What's the method of sending her away? So yeah, Ravuna right. said by her feet, and Rav Yehuda said with her wings. Why not just clap? Hang on, wrong. because that's not how you're... So the Rashi's second explanation is, as long as you get it to run and it flaps its wings, that's called Shiloh. And the Shulchan Aruch Paskins like that second opinion of Rashi. So this is, again, this is the halachic process. The Rabban Paskin like the first Lashon of Rashi. But Shulchan Aruch ended up Paskin like the second Lashon of Rashi. Tzorach L'Shalach Ha'em, Ad She'teitze Mitachas Yanu. Shiloh means get it out of your... So it runs away from you. 
And then take the chicks. Now, the guy wants to be smart. He also wants the mother bird. He doesn't want the, the mother to run too far away because after he takes the bunny, he could go after the mother. So that was the shot. They want, maybe, could you do something to the wings so it won't fly away so later on you can go and get the mother as well. So, Maybe you think you can cut its wings off before you chase it away. You're not permitted to do that. You have to chase it away with its wings intact. You've got to have it the ability to hop away and, and even flap away. Now, once it's away from you and you want to take the time to try to catch it, you're allowed to do so. You can't disable it in order to make it easy for you to do that. So you did cut it. You have to wait until it grows its wings back. And then we shall have it. Because otherwise you're not Makayim Shiluach. The Chazon Ish holds that one may follow the Shulchan Aruch and send the mother away in any manner as long as she still has, she still has wings. Near it, the Mitzvah Shiluach, Kadesh Tetzim Mitachas Yodo, Hainam Rishusa, from his, where he is. Shem Yachbot Satav Solo Yuchal. He has to send it away far enough from him that he can't just reach over and grab it. The Kozman Shiluachal Atav Solo Yuchash of Shiluach. If, it, if the bird has only hopped away where he can still reach out and grab it, it's not considered that he sent it away. It's no different whether he took it with his hand or as Jerry said, you give a potch and it runs away. It doesn't make matter how you cause it to flee. <coughs> and the safer called Shalach to Shalach, which is a contemporary safer on the Halachas of Shalach HaKeng, says, Kishalach HaEim, some say he has to grab it over the nest with your hands. For Azla Shalchem, and then chase it. But uh, but the problem is, you might be taking the the, the mother. So he rejects that. Use a stick, or you can patch and get it away. And that's how the post came today. You don't have to strike the bird. Just strike near it. It's going to get uh, surprised and fly away. Or throw a stone at it. And that causes it to escape. Even with your voice, and, and you yell at it. <clears throat> so do we ask what about a, it? It's allowed if you take it. the mother away with your hands. Says so the If you take the mother, yeah. and if and by chasing the mother, you yeah. have an essay. And also, I heard uh, uh, that there, there is a time for this for, for to teach you about to teach you. We to learned teach it you. last week. I know the Gemara. Yeah. No, but you can't say. By doing, we, we went through all of that last, we went through the back and forth about the... Was it about, more or was it here we learned it? No, we learned it here. We learned because, it here last that's week. Why, that's why it applies even to a non-kosher bird. It doesn't apply to a kosher bird, to a non-kosher bird. Why? Because the, 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 the kids have kept compassion also. Rambam says that, I think. That the Talmud is first, so therefore we apply only to, also for a non-kosher bird. No, 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 we, we... I think we learned that. I, no, yeah, no. Tomorrow we, we learned that before. Huh? No, in, no, you cannot. We went through the basis for the mitzvah. So, even though you, you, the reason for the mitzvah, in order not to be cruel and uproot yeah. the mother while her while with her young, but even though it's permitted, prohibited to say your mercy comes upon the nest of a bird. That, but then remember there were other poskim that held by doing it, it, yeah. it causes Hashem to have rachmanus on us, like we are His children. So, so why shouldn't it apply also to an unkosher? Let's see. We're going to see that it applies. We'll see that it applies to kosher birds, and we'll see the types of birds included in the mitzvah on page 235. So we're going to learn. Can you recite a bracha on the mitzvah of Shiloh HaKei? The Rishonim dispute whether you recite a bracha when fulfilling the mitzvah. The Ravid, which is brought down by the Archa Sholchan, says that you should recite a bracha. The near Parsha, Shachayim Vach, Meshach Shiloh, you should make a bracha. Chaim Atzati, Besefer Tomim, Doim La Ravid, 
Hey, Rishon, the Sof Simen Kufayim Tes, Divrei Bala Itur, who was a Rishon, B'Shem Hilchas Pesukos, V'Zulushon, or V'Hilchas Sa, Tzarech Levarach B'Shulach HaKain, U'V'Makeh. Right, when you build a fence on your roof, it's also, you make a bracha. Ad Kam L'Shon. In... So, of course, since it's a mitzvah that comes from time to time, you could perhaps have to say a Shech Yano as well. But in, by contrast, the Rajbah writes that one does not recite a bracha. Sho'alta. In the Shilas, Shilas and Shuvah is the Rajbah. In Mavarchim Bishulach HaKain Olam. Shuvah. Mikol Malka Mashin is topic L'choy Mavarchim Ala Seh Dahin Olam Shiluach Ola Lav Dahin Olam Si Kachem Labonim Vahaya Nira Yoyz Roshayin Olam Mavarch Ola Lav. The Ikra Mitzvah says the Rajpa is the love not to take the mother. And he says it would be more appropriate if the Brokha is on the love. It's, it's like a love on Nitik La say, right? It's the way to correct the love. Let's say you were over the love and you took the mother. You could correct it, for example, Heshivis uh, Akzela, right? There's a love of gzela, but there's a there's a positive assay a to correct it. So a, that a love on nitik lasay, there's no malchus for, right? So there's no malchus for gzela and other mitzvahs like that. So this would be the same. It says the Rajbah, but mikol malkom ena mavarech ela shetzivanu shaleach shanach einu ashiluach v'mevarchin ena mavarchin ela lasay shem mavarchin ela malav. We never make a bracha on a love, gentlemen. I will take issue with the Rajbah. There is one example we make a. When we say, Allah, Allah um, Arayas, by Kiddushin. What's Arayas? Arayas is a negative, is a negative prohibition. So there we make a bracha on a lav. So some say, it's a, it's a, really it's a birchas ha-shvach. It's not a birchas ha-mitzvah, it's one terence. I once heard Rabbi Sabolovsky say, say that the reason why we say Allah Arayas, because <coughs> it's a positive thing for Jews Goyim also cannot live with their daughter, with their sister, with their mother. But they don't have the various arises like daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, they, but only Jews have that. So we are in a high amount of, so the arias that we add, when we, when we marry, we add other arises to us, we need the in-laws, so that's why we make a bracha on it, because it, it shows our distinction compared to the Goyim. But anyways, I just say, the Rajma says, La'olam Allah, but there is a bracha made on Allah. Shein v'racha on Allah hanevela she'osur lano sa nevela. But we do she'osur lano sa arusos v'hitur lano sa nesuos. So, so we do make that bracha, even though the Rajma says we don't make a bracha on a nevela, right? V'hitur lano sa shchita. But lavi sreim achol is while levisha saklaim. We don't make a law, for example, on the prohibited foods that we eat. So we have a machlokas we show them. That's combined with something. Rivin and the Rajma. Not, Whether a bracha is made for shiluch hakei, okay. it's not but that it arises together with the with the uh, so not by itself. Alarayas no, that bracha, the, that that bracha is yeah. made al arayas. Some, not by itself. And okay. then we say v'hitur lano So that's part of the one bracha. So you, if by itself it probably would not make a, a bracha. If it didn't have v'hitur lano sanasuos, you probably would not have a bracha. But a you see the language of the rosh is exactly the same. Osur lano sa nevela vehitur lano sa shchuta. Yet there's no bracha made because the love is involved. Mm-hmm. You can ask us, so we we'll ask the question, we, why do we make the bracha on the arayas? So it is, you need a, we, we, I gave a teretz, because you need a teretz, because you see the, yeah. the, the Rajbo says there is no bracha on the nevela, even though it's the same lashon. Now, the Binyan Sia and Rav Yaakov Etlinger <clears throat> lived in Germany in the 1850s, the Binyan Sia and concludes that one does not recite a bracha for a different reason. Perhaps the bird will fly away before one chases it away, which was result in one reciting a bracha of atal. That means you stand there about to chase it, you're going to make the bracha, and all of a sudden it flies away. So it's because of the chashash of bracha of atal, he says you shouldn't do it. Right? You have to do it before you do the action. It'll run away by itself. Not like Right there, he wanted to say, if you take the mother, you committed the love, so now you want to send it, don't make the bracha. Because it's not, it, you're holding it. There's no chashash bracha levatala. Avmazav, imitzui, shabal yadeh avera. Lachem b'cholofen, eim mevarchen al shilachake. 
Some Akronim maintain that one may recite the bracha without Hashem's name. And that same Sefer, Shalech to Shalach, Yesh Oymim, Shemavarchim be'ez ki'a mitzvah shiloch ha'kir. Ha'chein das harbe ma'poskim she'en alav. Ha'chein he das poskim zmanenu. He seems to say that the poskim of today say not to make it. Acharot se'yach lovarch b'lo shemu ma'pus. And he gives you the text of the prayer. He says, V'hin ne'i mucharim zubim. Now, the only additional halach I want to learn is page 235. The types of birds included in the mitzvah. The mitzvah of Shiloh HaKain does not apply to every single bird that one might encounter. Rather, it applies only to the mother as opposed to the father and applies only to kosher species of birds. <coughs> Says the Shalech to Shalach, Haro HaKain, Uvo of Shiesh Bo Simani Tahara, Achen Masore Shekib Lubo Shutor, but there's no Masore. So remember, you know, that regarding kosher birds, it's not just enough that it is kosher. You have to have a masora. That's why we had a, a, a suda at, Lava, at uh, Prime Grill 10 years ago, 20 years ago at Lavana. The OU always makes a suda, and they bring various unusual birds to make sure that there's the remains of masora. That, you know, I ate that bird like we ate quail. We ate a whole of different birds. I, Yaakov and I went to that, that suda <laughs> because... That was the problem with the turkey. There was no masora. It, it has the kosher simani, but there was no masora in the past. So that's why there were some who did not want to eat the turkey. But since we've been eating it for 200 years, we all eat it today. But the problem with the turkey was because there was no masora from a shoichet to the, to the shoichet who taught you, oh, this is a kosher bird. So he's saying this. So he wanted to say, let's say you see... Say again? There's no, there's no Turkey in Europe. So, how did they have it so that's why there was an issue. That's no, why there were some so poskim that said you shouldn't eat it. Because we had eaten it for 200 years. Uh, that's really the, the bottom line, why, why, why they permitted it. I don't know. What was that? It's a mess. <laughs> you don't, for example, recognize the bird. <laughs> now, maybe of a suffix, it's kosher. I can't eat it. But send away the mother bird misofik. Sofik kashrus or not. And eagle, a vulture, a hawk. We know they're not kosher. There's no din of shiluch hakein. It's a mo- the mother sits on the nest, not the father. Not like what I said, that in our day we see that pigeons and doves. The father and the mother change spots, and the father does sit on the egg. He says that the mother sits on it after you know, after sundown until after sunrise. So since there's no din on the father, you should do it on the mother, you have to do it at night. Okay. Okay. Now we're Messiah.